Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and here we are finally with my spoiler-free review. So I will not talk about any spoilers in this movie. Um, if I talk about something that I think might be a minor spoiler, I'll let you know, and I'll tell you what time code to skip to. But like I said, I'm going to try to be very vague, uh, very brief, or as brief as I can, because you know I like to talk a lot. And I'll save a lot of my remaining energy. As you can tell, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I'm kind of feeling fatigued out uh, from just a crazy weekend. And then also having to see this movie a second time, which I saw today, and then went to work and worked a, a you know average shift, a pretty you know eight hour shift, but we did inventory. So we went into the night and then I drove home and it's now like 11.45 right now, uh, PM. And uh, I'm, I'm exhausted, I'm so tired, but I just didn't have time to record this earlier before I went to work because I saw the movie at a matinee and then I had to go straight to work. So uh, I just didn't have time to do this earlier. So I'm, I'm kind of out of energy, but I'll try to keep that energy, the little bit I have left, and I'll use it in this video and the next one and then a third video. So we're gonna do non-spoilers here and then the next episode will be, um, you know, I'll, I'll record it now, but I'm gonna share it in like a week or two. Um, it'll be my spoiler review. So we'll save that maybe for episode 700, you know, or around there. And then uh, we'll do a whole episode just talking about the post credit scene, which again, don't talk about any spoilers down in the comments. If you can, try to hold out. We're trying to at least wait till this movie comes out in the UK, uh, which is next week on October 15th. And that is when we'll start talking about spoilers on here. And I'll mark the videos. So those of you on other parts of the world, like Australia or other places that you have to wait till November to see this movie, um, you know, just stay away from those videos because we're going to talk about spoilers in them. So, all right, without further ado, this movie, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, that we've been waiting for. You know, I was on the set of the movie. We've been following the movie. We've been following this whole franchise, uh, covering all the comic books, everything. And, uh, you know, it's been just so fun to see the, the end of the road and see the final product. Now, I will say uh, right off the bat, uh, because I will get into some criticisms without, you know, spoiling too much, but then also get into some things I like, again, without spoiling too much. And I'll start with some of the criticisms, one of them which was, you know, Andy Serkis said in an interview recently that the runtime of this movie was very intentional, that they kind of always from the beginning had planned a, uh, you know, a very fast paced, go, 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 breakneck style movie that just never really... Um, let you, you know, linger too long in a scene, just long enough to get whatever information you need, and then on to the next scene. And I feel like when I watch this, he's, I, he probably is right on some level, but I don't know if it, the movie was meant to be this quick, because it does go by uh, so quickly in some scenes that it starts introducing concepts or ideas that I am well, like, oh, that seems neat. I'm, I'd love to see where they go here. Or, oh, that comedy beat actually landed with me because some of the comedy in the movie doesn't, but some of it does. And I'm like, oh, that was great. I would like to I would have liked that to go on a little bit more or show a little bit more of that um, because I thought that was, you know, pretty great humor and interaction with some characters. And that just didn't really pan out and they just cut, 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 cut. So I feel a little bit of an editing room thing because there will be some times where there are scenes that just kind of end and you hear a voiceover, you know, uh, saying one last line to kind of signify the, the scene is ending to go on to the next scene. And it's clearly something that was done in ADR or something late or a, a, a dialogue line lifted from a scene that was cut out and they just put that line in at the end of the scene. You can tell some of that's done here. So there's definitely some some chopping going on with this movie. So I don't know how much longer the movie was. Maybe, it, maybe they looked at it as like an hour, 45 minutes. Maybe it was only 10 minutes longer. But um, for whatever reason, they, they chopped it up a little bit. So I will say to Andy Serkis's point, you know, he, they may have always planned this movie to go by quickly, but I don't know if they planned it to go this quickly. Um, but you never know. I mean, maybe they're, they're happy with what it, the cuts that were made, and, and you know, that's, that's for us to now to decide if we like it or not. So for me, some cuts worked, some didn't. Um, Character-wise, I would say the standout, obviously, is Tom Hardy and his relationship with Venom. That's always going to be the standout because they, they were so great in the first movie. And Tom even said, you know, I listened to feedback. We listened to what people said online. And me and Kelly, who worked on the story together, and then Kelly, who wrote the script, you know, we kind of went off some of that feedback and tried to put in more of what people seemed to like to the best of our abilities and then take out some of the stuff they didn't like. So I would say they definitely listened to, um, you know, more Venom and Eddie interaction, but not as much. You know, there's actually a whole sequence in the movie that you don't really get the interaction. I don't want to go into spoilers, but there is there is less interaction between those characters. And that's uh, kind of like, ah, oh, okay, well, I get what you're doing and, and why we need to do this. But um, still, that kind of resolved very quickly, too. Like, it, it felt like a good thing that needed to breathe for part of the movie. But then they just wrapped it up real quick because they're like, all right, we got to get into the final act and... 
so that felt a little rushed too and again i'm trying to be vague here <laughs> um but uh but as far as villains go the first movie i thought riz ahmed is a great actor but the he just him and riot just weren't very compelling or interesting as villains and so in this one you get woody harrelson and carnage and I liked them a lot more. Woody Harrelson, he definitely knew what kind of movie he was in. In the first Venom movie, I felt like Tom kind of set a tone and none of the other actors or actresses really matched his tone too much, except maybe Mrs. Chen and maybe Dan a little bit in the first one. But in this one, I felt like a little bit more people were on the same page as Tom. So Woody was definitely one of them. Um, another one was Naomi, who plays Shriek. I felt like she was very campy and kind of over the top at times. And although some of her lines were kind of cringe and I didn't really like parts of her character development, although they didn't use her a ton. And sometimes when you did see her, she was just kind of like laying around in like her cell um, and not getting a ton of dialogue from her or, um, you know, or sometimes you would just get some cringe dialogue from her. But there were a couple good scenes with her. I thought uh, I just would have liked her to be used more. And because they changed her power set uh, to a degree, I mean, I don't know. I think one of you corrected me before, but in the movie, they actually have her scream and she has like a sonic scream, like Black Bolt kind of style. Um, she may have had that in the comic. I just can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but, uh, but I thought in the comic, she put her hands together and shot like a laser from her hands. Um, so... I just, you know, I thought maybe we would still see that power in the movie and, and we don't. It's just the screaming power, which then makes her not as compatible with Cletus and Carnage because he has an aversion to sound. So I thought that was a neat element to add to the story. But I also felt like because of that, they used it as an excuse not to use her powers as much. And although she does get a, a couple cool scenes with her powers... I would have liked just a little bit more. Although I thought kind of how that ended up with her uh, at towards the end of the movie uh, with her and Venom and Carnage and like the big final showdown. I thought that was kind of fun how that wrapped up. I, I laughed out loud during it. Um, but again, I'll get into that in the spoilers. Um, I did like Dan in this movie. He has a moment where he kind of shines, which I liked. Um, and then also Anne in this, like I like Michelle Williams a lot, but I just feel like they didn't give her a ton in this like she is important to the film i think i saw someone else's review said that she wasn't very important to this movie i disagree i think she's very important to the relationship of eddie and venom in this movie and how they move past their um selfishness uh, in a way because they each want something but that's they're at odds with what they want or they're they're the things they want are at odds with each other and so you know like eddie doesn't want the the police because he's working with them now with cletus uh, to try to get more information about where the other bodies Cletus hid were. Um, he's working with the police, so he doesn't want them digging into him too much because obviously he's attached to an alien and he was involved with the Life Foundation thing and, you know, they could they could see that maybe he blew up the spaceship or whatever. Like, So he's a little nervous about working with the police and uh, and that nervousness is why he's trying to be secretive with, you know, him and Venom. And then Venom is more like, hey, I want to go out. I want to I want to be out there. I want people to know who I am and, you know, and that kind of stuff. Like, that's why I chose to stick on this planet. And one of the reasons was because I bonded to you and you're a perfect host. And then we could just go and be like good guys. We could be lethal protectors. And that was like a running gag in the movie was he kept saying like, come on, Eddie, call us the lethal protector. And Eddie's like, shut up. And it's kind of a running gag throughout the movie. So I, I like that. Obviously a nod to the comic book. And there are a lot of nods to the comic book, but I can't get into them because obviously of spoilers. So we will save those for the spoiler discussion. But there is some cool nods to different moments of the comic. The tone is, is you know, it's kind of like back and forth like the first movie was. I know a lot, a lot of people out there don't like when tone in a movie changes. Me personally, I feel like that's very uh, true to real life to an extent is uh, you could be laughing one moment and then the next moment something deathly serious, you know, stumbles across, you know, across your, your table or your desk. And, uh, and and then you go back to, you know, crying and then you kind of bounce around emotionally throughout life. Um, not like as quickly as they do in this movie, but, you know, the movie is like a, an exaggerated reality. Right. So to me, I don't mind when tone changes to an extent as long as because tone isn't just humor to seriousness like that's not just that's not what tone means completely tone is also like the style of the movie the visual look of the movie the the voice of the movie you know there's there's so many elements to it that is more than just oh it's funny in this scene and scary in this scene and uh you know intense in this scene and uh you know sad in this scene that's not just tone that's not that's not the definition of just what a tone the tone of a movie is so i think people get that confused sometimes when they're saying like oh i don't like the tone it jumps all over the place it's like well no the emotion jumps all over the place the tone 
is kind of the whole package. And I thought because they had a great uh, DP on this movie and they had Andy Serkis directing, I thought the tone was consistent, um, a little bit more so than the first movie. And that's one of the compliments I'll give this one is that they definitely knew kind of what type of movie they wanted to make this time around. And whether you like it or not, it is con it's pretty consistent. Uh, you know, so if you hate the movie, it's probably because you hate it because it's consistently bad in your eyes. For me, I thought it was consistent in its approach, its tone, its humor. And even though some of the jokes didn't land or some of the lines were cringe and, you know, took me out of that moment or that scene, overall, I still felt like, all right, I get what they were going for for this movie. It makes sense. It's very direct. It doesn't, uh, you know, go too much into, like, you know, real world stuff as far as like, um, you know, trying to comment or make a, make a, you know, comment on society or anything like that. It's, it's mainly just talking about relationships. And that's kind of the theme of the movie is relationships between Eddie and the symbiote, uh, between the symbiote and the world, uh, between Eddie and the world, between Eddie and Cletus, uh, Cletus and Carnage, uh, Cletus and Shriek, uh, Dan and Anne. <laughs> There's a, uh, you know, everything. Like just relationships in general, even friendships like Mrs. Chen and Eddie and Mrs. Chen and Venom. Um, There's a lot of cool stuff in this movie that kind of expands on relationships. And like I said, Dan gets a moment to shine. Anne kind of gets a moment to shine. I mean, she definitely uh, attributes something physical to the movie and the story. Uh, but she doesn't really drive the story in a direct way, but I feel like she does in an indirect way. I saw someone in the review say that she was, again, worthless and not worth putting in the movie. But I feel like she is kind of instrumental in explaining why uh, and what Eddie needs to work on himself to have a better relationship with the symbiote. And without her, you probably wouldn't have got that. I mean, you still could have written in a way to where you could have done it, but this is how the movie chose, and they used Anne as a vehicle to kind of explain you know, what Eddie's bad at when it comes to relationships and how theirs failed. And that kind of gets, you know, kind of brought back in this a little bit. And I, I liked it. I thought overall, you know, I, I would have liked to see more Michelle Williams. Um, and I would have liked to maybe a, a more of a, I don't know, I, I don't want to say she gave a bad performance because she didn't in my eyes, but there, there was something missing from her. Uh, you know, like Annie, I really want to love Annie you know like uh, she's like the Mary Jane character like you're the one she's the one you really want to root for to be with Eddie because you like Eddie and you want him to be happy but this is not that kind of movie <laughs> so so they kind of go in a different direction with all that but we'll talk more about that in spoilers but for now this is my spoiler free review and overall I would stick to my 7.5 review I went back and watched my first impressions video and I agree um, and there is something they introduce something that the symbiote has a power that he has in the comic books um, I say he and I should clarify that I saw people creating drama over Eddie and and you know whether he's gay with the symbiote and all this stuff and to me, I guess people don't really look at the symbiote this way, but I do. Uh, the symbiote, it, it does not have a sex. Uh, when it bonds with Eddie, it sounds like Eddie, right? It sounds like an exaggerated version of Eddie's voice. In the first movie, when it bonded with Anne, it sounded like an exaggerated version of her voice. Uh, and so, and that's kind of what happens throughout, you know, uh, this. And there's even some stuff regarding the suit and other hosts and stuff in this movie. So for me... It, it's it's not really a guy or a girl the symbiote it is it's like what bruce lee says he always says you know be like water if you be if you pour water into a glass it becomes the glass if you pour water into a teapot it becomes the teapot to me that's what the symbiote is if it's bonded to eddie it's like an extension of eddie but it still has its own personality but it kind of takes on attributes as eddie because they have to share the same skin and space and same when it bonded with Anne in the first movie so to me it's it being in a relationship with eddie the, I think some people read that too directly and they were like, oh my God, Eddie's gay with the symbiote. And it's like, well, I, I didn't see it that way um, because I don't think the word relationship means um, being with someone intimately like that. Uh, so to me, the, the relationship they have to work on in this movie is is a, like a friendship and a, and a, a partnership. Um, and, uh, and yes, you know, sometimes partners open up to each other and, and share feelings, but it's not like sexual in my opinion, <laughs> uh, because the movie doesn't go in that direction. I think people were wanting it to. And I'm like, well, I understand there are fans out there that like to ship venom and the symbiote, but 
you know, you're going to be disappointed <laughs> for sure. Uh, but otherwise, you know, like this movie, like I said, I'm going to stick to the 7.5 and uh, it's a little bit better than the first movie. Like the first movie, I think I started with an eight, but I was really rating the whole night and the experience and watching the movie with Tom. Um, and I dropped it down to a seven after watching it two or three more times because I was like, okay, that seems to be more of, you know, without the biasness of, of the fun I had, um, that seemed to be a more fair and solid review based on what I liked and didn't like of the movie. And this is just a step above the first movie. I think it's a 7.5, so it's a half a point higher. Um, and that honestly could go up, uh, seeing it a second time. Um, I, I technically did see it two times, but I forgot because of my memory seeing it the first time. So I had to go see it a second time, which I already planned, so it kind of worked out. Um, but the third time, uh, you know, uh, hopefully I won't forget it again and see it a third time because I'd love to have an actual second time of memory, you know, to, to go through and, and kind of pick this apart or, or, you know, or talk more about it and see if I like it more than 7.5 or if I liked it a little less than 7.5. But for me with this viewing that I just saw today, I had a blast. I was, I laughed out loud a couple of times and it wasn't like at the movie, but it was because of the movie or with the movie. And I didn't, uh, I didn't hate it. And I think a lot of people out there, uh, you know, <laughs> do some people do, I guess the critics really do, but I never really care about critics and what they say uh, when it comes to movies. I look at that audience score and it's cool to see people liking this and it's cool to see it do so well this opening weekend. Um, and $90 million is incredibly impressive. And I can't wait to talk about spoilers with you on the next video or not, not the very next video, obviously, but it'll be, I'll record it probably tonight or tomorrow, but, um, you know, but I, I'll save it for maybe the 15th or 16th. I'll probably put it up then. And then on the 18th, I'll put up the video where we talk about the post credit scene. So again, avoid talking about that in the comments down below so that people who haven't seen the movie yet can watch this and just kind of get a little bit more of my overall feelings. Um, but yeah, I thought this was great. And seeing uh, Donald the street man, our friend Otis, uh, he had a really great scene in the movie. Uh, Mrs. Chen had a really great scene. Like I said, Dan shined a little bit. Uh, Anne had a scene where I think she could have shined more, but they did give her a moment in this, and I liked I liked it for that. Um, and then I would have liked a little bit more of Shriek, um, but I did like what they did with Cletus and Carnage overall. I mean, there's I have some nitpicks there, and we'll get into it in spoilers. But obviously, I love Tom, and uh, and I love the Eddie Brock symbiote relationship, and I thought that was great. I was glad that that was once again the focus of this movie because I think it helps it stand out among other superhero movies. And, uh, and makes it, whether you love it or not, you, I think you'll remember it <laughs> for sure. Um, but if you have different opinion or same opinion, whatever it is, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.